you want to go somewhere but someone is blocking you on your midway and not allowing to go there or what if someone just lock you up in a room what happens then hey guys welcome to my legal classes this is ganesh pujari and we were discussing chapter 16 of indian penal code which is all about offenses against human body in this particular series today i am going to discuss two important aspects that is wrongful restraint and wrongful confinement both of these concepts are covered between section 339 to 348 and i am going to help you guys to understand this concept with the help of beautiful chart and beautiful case laws and then i am going to discuss all the punishment provisions why to waste time let's get into the first slide as i have already told there are two concepts that we are going to understand in this particular presentation they are wrongful restraint and wrongful confinement now wrongful restraint is defined under section 339 of ipc and wrongful confinement is discussed under section 340 of ipc now before i get into the definition i will take the help of that two images in the first image what happens there is a person who is trying to go somewhere but there is a block which is a red line that i have marked so that he cannot go to that side but remember he can go to every other sides which i have indicated via green lines so he is being blocked by one side that is what defined under section 339 where somebody voluntarily obstructs to prevent anyone proceeding in any direction in which that person has a right to proceed now he want to go to somewhere and he has the right to proceed and somebody is blocking them in that case it is known as wrongful restraint if you are not going to allow someone to go the side he wants to go then that becomes restraint and if you have that mens rea that you want to prevent them going that side then it becomes wrongful restraint that's the story of first image what happens in the second image here the person cannot go anywhere because he is being blocked by red lines from all the four sides that means he got confined he cannot go anywhere that is what discussed under section 340 which discusses about wrongful confinement where wrongfully restraining that is section 339 plus to prevent that person from proceeding beyond certain circumscribing limits if that happens then that comes under section 340 which is the aggravated form of section 339 if you want me to simplify it further i will give an illustration imagine there is one mr a and one mr x now a wants to go to market but x is not allowing a to go to market but a is free to go to anywhere else in this world he can go to playground he can go to school he can go to his home anywhere else he want to go but x will not allow him to go to market in that case x is creating wrongful restraint to a on the other hand if x is locking mr a in a room in that case it becomes wrongful confinement because a cannot go anywhere in that particular scenario that is how you have to differentiate section 339 and 340 not to worry i have a lot of case laws in my next slide let's understand in detail Section 339 defines what is wrongful restraint which we have already discussed and two of the important aspects there we need to remember is somebody has to voluntarily obstruct other person way and that is to prevent that person from proceeding in any direction in which that person has a right to proceed. If that happens in that case it is wrongful restraint and the most important part is here he cannot proceed in one way the rest of the ways are free that is very important. And one exception for section 339 is this doesn't apply to the private property. Of course, if someone is trying to enter my house, I have all the right to stop them because that is my private property. That exception we need to keep in our mind. I have two important case laws here. One, Haji Gulam Muhammad Azam versus Emperor. Here, an accused was the owner of the house. He locked the house which had given on rent and then when tenant tried to enter the house it was already been locked by the owner now tenant put a case against the owner and it was held that the owner was wrongfully restraining the tenant and it was an offense under section 339 likewise in one another case law that is madhav versus nalini marna the accused wrongfully restrained bus number 1414 and held that voluntarily obstructing vehicle in which a person is traveling is wrongful restraint 
if some vehicle is moving if someone else is blocking it from the front purposefully then that is also considered as wrongful restraint which is coming under section 339 then comes section 340 which discusses about wrongful confinement i have already told this is the aggravated form of section 339 where whoever wrongfully restrains any person in such a manner as to prevent that person from proceeding beyond certain circumstantial limit in that case he has committed wrongfully to confine that is very important here the person cannot go anywhere that is the very important ingredient that we need to remember and i have two case laws here also in the first case law that is state of gujarat versus keshav lai maganbai here what happened it was discussed by the court that for a charge of wrongful confinement proof of actual physical restriction is not essential it need not to be that you are locking up someone in the room or you are tying up someone to something it is not really required sometime without even locking up or tying up or whatsoever you can cause wrongful confinement for example a is taking bath in public bathroom and b is coming and taking away all the clothes of mr a now a cannot come out because he doesn't have clothes to come out that way he got wrongfully confined in that particular bathroom that is what you need to remember sometime the confinement can happen on psychological basis also by creating fear terror etc you can confine someone so these are the different forms of confinement and that is what discussed under that particular case law the second case law that is deep chand versus state of rajasthan few accused people came in masked way and took away a boy and they threatened his father to give lot of money and till 17 days they kept that boy with them and delivered back only when they got the money from victim's father now it was held that all these 17 days the boy was in wrongful confinement of all those people who have taken him away and they were being punished accordingly then comes the punishment provisions starting from section 341 which discusses about punishment for wrongful restraint which can go up to one month simple imprisonment or fine of rupees 500 or both and here the offenses are cognizable offenses bailable offenses any magistrate can conduct the trial and they are compoundable offenses with the consent of the person restrained now section 342 discusses about punishment for wrongful confinement where the punishment can go up to one year simple imprisonment or fine of rupees 1000 or both and here the offenses are cognizable offenses bailable offenses any magistrate can conduct the trial and they are compatible offenses with the consent of the person who got confined section 343 discusses about wrongful confinement for three or more days which can go up to nine days where the punishment can go up to two years or fine or both and here the offenses are cognizable offenses bailable offenses any magistrate can conduct the trial and they are non compatible offenses section 344 discusses about wrongful confinement for 10 or more days here the punishment can go up to three years or fine or both and the offenses are cognizable offenses bailable offenses any magistrate can conduct the trial and they are compatible offenses with the consent of the person who got confined Section 345 discusses about wrongful confinement of person for whose liberation writ has been issued. There is an order to release him even after if there is a confinement. In that case, the punishment can go up to two years or under any other provisions if anything attracts under the chapter 16 that will be applied. The offenses here are under CRPC, cognizable offenses, bailable offenses, magistrate of first class conduct the trial and they are compatible offenses with the consent of the person who got confined. Section 346 discusses about wrongful confinement in secret. If somebody is confining someone and keeping them in secret so that no one who are interested in that particular person could find him or any public servant could find him. If they are causing that, in that case the punishment can go up to two years and if there are anything else applicable under this particular chapter that will also be taken care and the offenses here are cognizable offenses, bailable offenses, magistrate of the first class takes the trial or conducts the trial and they are non-cognizable offenses. Section 347 discusses about wrongful confinement to extort property or to constrain them to do some illegal act. Now if someone to extort from confined or the interested person any property 
or valuable security or of constraining them to do some illegal act or get some information if anything is done along with confinement of such person in that case the punishment can go up to three years along with fine the offenses here are cognizable offenses bailable offenses any magistrate can conduct the trial and they are non compoundable offenses in the same way if someone is wrongfully confining someone to extort confession or compel restoration of property then section 348 comes into picture where the punishment can go up to three years along with fine and the offenses there also cognizable offenses bailable offenses any magistrate can conduct the trial and they are non compoundable offenses with that i am concluding this particular lecture and if you are still confused this is a simple way to remember this if you want to go somewhere and somebody is blocking from one side then it is restricting that is restraining you cannot go this side but you can go every other side anywhere else you want to go definitely you can go on the other hand confining means you cannot go anywhere maybe you are being locked up in a room or being tied or as i said you got stuck in a bathroom and somebody took away all the clothes all of these you cannot go anywhere in that case it is confinement i hope that makes clear with that i am concluding the session Thank you so much for subscribing my channel. Please like, share and comment my videos. All the very best for whatsoever purpose you are watching my channel. And thanks again.